Silver and iron to the origin. Gem and the Archduke of Contracts to the cornerstone. The ancestor is my great master, Shinorg. The all-lighted wind becomes a wall. The gates in the four directions close, coming from the crowd. The three-forked road that leads to the kingdom circulates. Shut, fill, shut, fill, shut, fill, shut, fill, shut, fill. Repeat every five times. Simply shatter once filled. I announce yourself is under me. My fate is in your sword. In accordance with the approach of the Holy Grail, if you abide by this feeling, this reason, then answer. Here is my oath. I am the one who becomes all that is good of the world of the dead. I am the one who lays out all the evil of the world of the dead. You seven heavens, clad in three words of power, arrive from the ringing of deterrence. O oh, Keeper of the Balance! Wait, what? O oh, Keeper of the Balance! O oh, Keeper of the Balance! I'm doing everything by the book. Why isn't any of this working? Hello? Hey, McNeil, I have a question. Fat man? Aren't you supposed to be dead? Wait, 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 where are you calling from? Did, did I summon you? Ah, oh, shit. The war hasn't even started. I'm going into it handicapped. That's just friggin' great. Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence, but, um, no. When I got to hell, they told me I couldn't die until I finished the Volume 4 review. So I'm trying to summon Montiome for help, but I keep getting a busy signal. Oh, you're summoning to- oh, okay, that, that explains. We're probably both getting a busy signal, that's why. I might explain it. Oh, and, and while I have you on the line, um, the summoning incantation is my fate is your sword, or, or is it my doom is your sword? It's not important, it's more about the number of syllables. Thanks. Um, uh, anyway, do, do you mind just holding off on your summoning for just a second? Let, let me finish mine first, and then they can get to yours. I, I'm running out of bananas. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Just call me when you're done. Uh, thanks, got it. Um, hey, hey, wait, wait. Um, so, does this mean you're not going after the grail? <laughs> what? No. Who would fight for some dusty old cup? It's... it's not. It's more like a... I... never mind. It's your loss. <sighs> oh, Keeper of the Balance! No, someone else has to be blocking the line. Do you know anyone else that's involved in all this? No. Oh, wait! I got an idea. Ah, oh, fat man. To what do I owe the pleasure? Hey, man. Are you trying to summon a servant right now? Oh, we were trying to summon ours, but someone keeps hogging the party line. Ah, yes, I was just in the middle of it. Tell me, I was having a bit of trouble. It is my fate is your sword. Not my doom is your sword, right? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, more, yeah, it's more of about a number thing. of syllables type deal. Oh, thank God. I was worried I was doing something wrong. All right, that, that's nice. Uh, could you maybe hold off until Fat Man and I, you know, summon first, just, uh, you know... Well, I suppose that's fair. I guess Pinkie Pie will have to wait. Oh, thanks, man. Wait, wait did you say Pinkie Pie? You're summoning a pie? But she's a... Pony. Well, yeah, I mean, she's got a big-ass cannon and a pretty chipper attitude, so for why not? Because she's not real. What? Well, I mean, the person you're trying to summon has to be a historic legend or a historic figure that isn't alive. Well, that's bullshit. Who made these rules? I want a word with them. It's magic. The rules are admittedly arbitrary. Huh. 
Well, who's to say I can't have Pinkie Pie as my servant? I mean, it's the rules. You can't argue with the rules. Fuck the rules. I'm going to storm Parliament with my glorious pink mount and force them all to party all night long. Fine, whatever. Just let me get my summon in first. All right, all right. I'll hold off. Good. Oh, keep her up a balance! Your summoning circle is glowing. What? No? Hold on, let me check. Hey, dude, what's up? What are you doing here? What happened to your head? Have you watched my videos? <laughs> you were that funny? I watch your show all the time. Um, besides, I'm just, I just wanted to use your summoning circle. Why mine? I, my, my blood guy only has dog blood. It won't be a second, I just, I just, it's a local call. What the hell does that mean? I hit someone on the way over here. Uh, but why? Why? Brit, 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 brit. One word. Bum fights. That's two. Doesn't matter, listen, the Jack in the Box down the street has bum fights right behind it, like, like, every night. That's like 50 bucks a night. Each? That's besides the point. Look, are you in or are you out? Oh, for Christ's sake. You know, you don't have to summon some random hobo you hit with your car. You can summon a great boxer like Muhammad Ali. Yeah, what? Can I just summon my own servant to be done with all of this? You guys can sort this out while I'm working. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Go ahead. Oh, keeper of the balance! I'm not even surprised at this point. Hey, are one of you trying to summon a servant? I've been trying for the last five minutes, but I keep getting a busy signal. Oh, hey there, Teth. Yeah, we've been stepping over each other like drunken cats. Well, stop it. My next video is due out tomorrow, and I need to summon Captain America ASAP so I can interview him. Captain? You, you can't summon him! He's a fictional character! He's a legendary icon in the face of the American public. I'm pretty sure Paul Bunyan and Davy Crockett are summonable. Davy Crockett actually existed! Hang on a minute, if he's allowed to summon a fictional character, then why can't I? He's not allowed to summon a fictional character, you're both deluded! Well, you can't stop me now, commencing the summoning. You idiot! You have no idea what the hell you're going to end up summoning! Huh. So Davy Crockett was a real person. Who would have guessed? Wait, does that mean Paul Bunyan was real too? All right, that should be done and... Um, did it work? Mike Tyson would be a better fighter. No, he's not a better boxer than Muhammad Ali, you're crazy! But he fights dirty. Good point, but he's not dead. It's not in my car. Goodbye, let's go. Wow, I mean, honestly, who even needs that many legs? We are all going to die. So, this is my first ever Patreon requested video, and two more should be on the way, if any of them bothered to check my Patreon or their messages. But shout out to the one who actually did check them from time to time. Thanks for being such a great supporter to the show, Morose Potato. I wouldn't be the person I am today without you. And as such, I'm glad I could cover a topic you wanted me to. That said, you just had to pick Fate, didn't you? For those of you who don't know, I have a bit of a history with Fate Stay Night as a franchise, and while it's not a particularly long history, that doesn't mean it was pleasant. I mean, getting stabbed in the chest isn't exactly a long process, but the duration of the actual stab doesn't lend itself to a pleasant day overall. But back on point, some friends of mine recommended that I watch Fate, and it should be noted that these people were almost strictly friends I'd made online, who I rarely associate with these days anyway, and that I should start with the original Fate Stay Night anime before jumping into any of the quote-unquote good series in the franchise. 
Please kindly take notice of the word good and how the word that typically contrasts it is notably absent from their description of Fate Stay Night. In fact, there really wasn't much of a description of Fate Stay Night beyond you'll just have to watch it to understand the rest of the series. And after watching the damn thing, I can completely see why they left the word out of the loop, because if they hadn't, I would have never dragged myself through this goddamn series in the first place. I'd probably have run to the hill screaming heretical doctrine like it was law, hoping that a hillbilly from the gaming fad of 2017 would put me out of my misery. So how bad is Fate Stay Night? Is it poorly written? Is it poorly animated? Does the action lack impact? Or does it go too far? Well, yes. But that's not the heart of the issue. The heart of the issue is that the series is painfully boring. Excruciatingly so, actually, to the point where I wanted to claw my eyes out, put them in postage, ship them to Finland, and have them freeze to death in the snowy mountains, because that would have been more entertaining than what Fate Stay Night shoveled into my face. Which is why, when asked whether or not I'd seen Fate Zero, the prequel series, I had to firmly say no, as I'd sworn off anything from the series that didn't have more than implied lesbianism and cute magical girls saving the world. But all that came to an end when Mopo decided to request, nay under my rules, demand, that I do a video on Fate Zero. So I buckled down and watched the first season, and yeah, it was pretty damn good. I've admittedly not sat down for the second season because this commission only covers six or seven hours of a show and a review of roughly five minutes, but believe me, it's shot up to the top of my docket in the future. It's another one of those works done brilliantly by Gen Urobuchi, Though how involved the man actually was, I'm not too sure, and I can't be bothered to do the research since my script is already consuming every second more voraciously than my sister's cat, and any hand that strays anywhere within 15 feet of her face. So, all that ah, ah. so instead of doing a full review, I'm going to examine why Fate Zero is better than Fate Stay Night by simply observing the opening two hours of each show, keeping in mind that I've not finished Fate Zero, and the fact that combined, both series are between 12 and 14 hours long apiece. This roughly equates to episodes 1 through 4 of Fate Stay Night and episodes 1 through 3 of Fate Zero, considering episode 1 is an hour long on its own. Primarily, the biggest difference between the two is their choice in focus and secondarily their sense of scope. Fate Stay Night opens and focuses squarely on Shiro Emiya, a high school student that living a normal life while also having some limited magical ability. Along the way, we're introduced to a number of different characters who will play a role in the series, and occasionally the show will focus on the due protagonist Rin and her summoned servant Archer, but largely the camera stays focused on Shiro and what events transpire throughout his day. This leads to a number of encounters that quickly introduce Shiro to the world of the Holy Grail War, a war where seven mages fight against one another using seven summoned heroic spirits in order to obtain the Holy Grail, a magic item that can grant any wish. As the show's title would indicate, he's fated to fight in the war and accidentally calls forth Saber, the revived form of King Arthur who was actually a female, who also went on to become the series' mascot character. At the end of the two hours, Shiro sacrifices himself to save Saber from a fatal blow, dying himself in the process. He's revived, of course, because magic, but the act itself becomes one of the key defining moments for his character during the show, both for good and for ill. Conversely, Fate Zero spreads out its attention, not only between characters, but between distances and even time. We're shown each of the magi who will end up summoning for the war. Kiritsugu Emiya, Tokiomi Tosaka, Kenneth Archibald, Ryonosuke Uryu, Waverly Velvet, Karia Matao, and Kirie Kotomine. They are joined by their servants, and as each episode progresses, we get to see as the partner sets acclimate to one another, and as alliances between the different factions begin to emerge very much in the same vein as the Hunger Games, unifying to survive until the very end of the war. On top of that, the first two hours ends with the very first proper confrontation between servants in the season. On paper, both of these sound like rather straightforward approaches to establishing their seasons and would be rather healthy if executed well, but they are not equal in that regard. Fate Zero has a monumental issue with pacing which is illuminated within the first two episodes. The opening is a cold one, depicting who we will learn are Saber and Gilgamesh at the conclusion of Fate Zero, duking it out at the end of the Holy Grail War ten years prior. But after that, the first episode has no significant action to speak of, and the only break we have from the building action comes in the form of Taiga, Shiro's guardian, who is the season's comic relief. Episode 2 has a similar issue, though it's arguably more critical since it's the first actual fight sequence in the show. Shiro is attacked without provocation, and it is in this attack that we're introduced to the very idea of servants, how they're summoned, and the fact that there's a war happening that Shiro is unaware of. 
So many different elements that there's not enough time breaking it up for the audience to digest it comfortably. Including this, the combat doesn't conclude in the given episode, so the audience is left without a proper climax, even with Shiro accidentally summoning Saber to his side. This off-kilter pacing continues through the next two episodes, with a battle from episode 2 between Lancer and Saber ending before the first third mark during the third episode, and the battle between Saber, Archer, and Berserker ending before the first half in the fourth episode. Because of this, the latter halves of these episodes are either filled with exposition dumps from Rin, or quiet, pointless contemplation, and it breaks any kind of traditional narrative flow. This wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if it was handled well, but the conversations between the characters are so robotic and stiff, so laden with information and details, that is rarely a breath of character. This does ease out a little bit later down the line, but these early issues mar the series going forward and it especially doesn't help when new issues arise, such as Shiro's hyper-masculine mentality of protecting the heavily armed veteran knight from harm simply because she's a girl. A real feminist icon, that Shiro. Fate Zero, meanwhile, balances out its pacing incredibly well. In the first hour alone, we get surface-level motivations for around six or seven distinct characters, political intrigue within the world of mages, and the realities that go into being part of the world of magic that underlies our own. There's not an action set piece to be seen almost at all during the two-hour expanse, but it plays its cards right when it comes to where it should place its focus. It doesn't linger any longer on any given conversation than it needs to, each one giving us both insight into the character's present and into different facets of the war without undigetic exposition being slammed into our ears. I learned more about the Holy Grail War in this opening hour than I did about it during the full run of Fate Stay Night, which only managed to confuse me by the conclusion. In addition, the big moments that reinvigorate the pacing come at the conclusion of each episode, and each one has a proper build. The conclusion of the first hour-long episode culminates in the summoning of all the servants, Bar, Caster, and Assassin, an event that each character has already talked about and expressed their thoughts on so we know the weight of each summoning for each character. The second episode ends with the supposed death of the Assassin's Servant, which we as an audience can see as the manipulation on part of the alliance between Tosaka and Kirie. The third episode ends with the first true conflict between servants, with Saber and Lancer getting a chance to show down against one another. All of these events have proper build and proper payoff, which they need in order to make that cold cut to the episode title at the very end of each episode all that more punchy. It also helps that the humor of Fate Zero is more dispersed than the one-trick tiger that is Taiga in Fate Stay Night. Waverly and Ryder and Ryonosuke and Castor are two excellently crafted sets of comic relief characters not only due to the fact that they're genuinely relevant to the plot, but also because they hold with them a genuine sense of threat and danger. Hell, Castor manages to be so gleefully evil that I laughed every minute he was off murdering children. Either that says something about the quality of the writing, or about my character as a human being, and I've checked my pulse at least three times today, and I'm sure I felt a few heartbeats still going strong. I hope. I could be unfair and compare the animation qualities, but I know that Fate Zero had a bigger production behind it, and far more advanced tech at their disposal, making them the better looking show. So even as much as I want to complain about how absolutely flat I find Fate Stay Night's animation, I really can't, at least not against Fate Zero. Now a contemporary anime, like say, Full Metal Alchemist or Read or Die? Yeah, gonna call your animation out of shit on this one, Stay Night. Your action scenes are crap. But that's all I can really go into now with the limited time frame of this commission and without finishing Fate Zero proper. But I hope you understand that there's a lot more here at issue with Fate Stay Night that I haven't covered. Hell, my main complaint is actually that Shiro himself and his twisted sense of chivalry, but that it's an entire video on its own. I hope you enjoyed this little peek into my mind. Once again, special thanks to Morose Potato for supporting me all this time, and of course thanks to everyone who has supported me thus far. Catch you all on the flip side. Hey there! If you liked the video, please hit that like button down below, or even leave a message in the comments. If you're interested in more content like this, check out the rest of the channel, as well as our Facebook page and my Twitter handle. If you'd like updates on our newest content, hit that subscribe button so our news of our most recent work reaches you as fast as possible. And if you're feeling especially generous today, please check out our Patreon page. It's thanks to you, our faithful fans and followers, that we can make the content that we love. Please keep up that support, and as always, we'll catch you on the flip side.